I know most of the world measures temperatures in Celsius, and some of us in North America use Fahrenheit, but who the heck uses Kelvin? I don't know, but let's fix that by changing the temperatures in our list of cities from Kelvin to Celsius. So how should we go about making these temperature changes? Many of you are probably thinking about doing some sort of loop, such as a for loop or a while loop. That's an understandable approach, as that's pretty much the way everybody's taught, but there's a simpler way of doing this using the map function. Now, Ramda has a map function, but technically we don't need the Ramda library to use map, because arrays in JavaScript have a map function. In fact, I'll start by showing you how to use map with just plain old JavaScript, then a bit later we'll start using Ramda's map function, which in my opinion is a better option. Why is Ramda's map function better? Stay with me and you'll find out. Before we do any actual coding, let me walk you through a simple example using the map function on an array so you have a sense of how the map function works. Here's a simple array of numbers. Now I'd like to double every number in the array. In other words, I'd like to transform the one to two, the two to four, and the three to six. Okay, so I decide to write a double function, which takes a number as an input parameter, and it returns the result of multiplying the number times two. This double function does the data transformation I want, but the question is, how do you apply this function to each number in the array? Now, this is where the map function comes in handy. As I mentioned a moment ago, arrays in JavaScript have a map function, which you can use. The map function takes a transformation function as its input parameter. This might seem weird to you. We're supposed to pass a function into a function? I know this seemed weird to me when I first saw it, and we'll circle back to this idea of passing functions into functions in a later video. Let's create a constant named doubled numbers, and we'll set it to the value you get by calling the numbers arrays map function, and then we'll pass in our double function. Now let's step through what happens when this code executes. The call to map will start by grabbing the first item in the numbers array, the one, and passing it into our double function. Next, the input number one is multiplied times two, giving us a return value of two. Then the return value, two, is collected in a new array that the map function is building. Now, the map function gets the second item in the numbers array, the two, and passes it into the double function as well. Then the two is multiplied times two, giving you a return value of four, and the four is stored in the second element of the new array being built down here. Finally, the last number in the numbers array, the three, is passed into the double function. Three is multiplied times two, which gives you the return value of six, and then the six is stored as the third element in the new array. The final array you see here is the return value of the map function. What you just saw there is a simple example of how the map function works. Okay, so how is map better than a loop? Well, I'll be honest, the reasons are sort of subtle and might go unnoticed. To point these differences out, let's consider how we double each number using a loop instead of a map, and then we'll compare them. Doubling every number in an array using a loop would probably look something like this. If you didn't want to change the original numbers array, you'd create an array to store the doubled number. Then you'd loop over the original array, and then you'd manually mutate the new array, adding each doubled number. This works, but let me ask you this question. Which of these two options is simpler? To me, the obvious answer is the solution where we used map, and I'll give you a couple reasons why. In the for loop, we had to make changes or mutate a couple of different things. First, the double numbers array, when we pushed values onto it, and i, which we incremented. Notice in the solution where we used map, we didn't mutate any data. Okay, big deal, who cares, right? Well, actually, I care, and the reason why is because I hate unnecessary complexity. The programs we build will inevitably be complex, but if we're not careful about how we build our programs, we'll end up building unnecessarily complex programs, which sucks. There's another subtlety between these two options that I want to point out. Which of these two options requires more thinking? I'd say it's the looping option, because I've got to think about things like the variable i, and the new array, and using push and pulling numbers out of the array. Okay, but why does this matter? One of our biggest bottlenecks as programmers or humans in general is the limitations of our conscious mind. Generally, we can only keep around seven ideas in our conscious mind at a time. I'm sure you've experienced a case where you were deep in thought and one small interruption causes you to lose track of what you were thinking about 
and it takes you 10 or 20 minutes to get your mind back where it was. That's an example of the limitations of the conscious mind, and it sucks. But recognizing that it's a bottleneck and working in a way to minimize the limits of our conscious mind will generally make you more productive. Alright, I'll get off my soapbox and we'll get back to our mapping example. Now keep in mind, in this example, the data type of the array items was just simple numbers, but it could be any type, such as a string, or as it is in our case, a list of plain old objects, or what I like to think of as city records. Let's get back to the challenge at hand, which is to transform the city's temperatures from Kelvin to Celsius. I'll start by opening a new file named index.js in the Atom Editor. First, I'll pull in an array of cities by setting a constant named cities to the value returned by requiring the local cities.json file. Next, let's do this. I'll create a constant named updated cities, which I'll set to the value returned by calling the cities arrays map function. Then I'll pass in a new function named update temperature, which doesn't actually exist yet, but we'll create it right now. To make this function, I'll create a constant named update temperature, which I'll set to a function that takes a city parameter. The first thing we'll do in the body of this function is create a constant named temp for the current city's temperature. We'll set the temp to the value you get by taking the city's temp and subtracting 273.15. This right here is the formula for transforming a temperature from Kelvin to Celsius. Now we could leave this conversion as it is, but I'd rather make a function to do this transformation, so let's tweak this a bit. I'll create a constant named k to c. k to c will be set to a function that takes a single parameter k for the temperature in Kelvin. Then I'll use a fat arrow to delimit the function parameter from the body. Next I'll just key the temperature in Kelvin, k, and I'll subtract 273.15. This expression right here will be evaluated and it becomes the return value from this function. Now I'll just replace this code with a call to the new k to c function, passing in the city's temperature. So why make k to c a function? Several reasons. We may want to do a Kelvin to Celsius conversion in other places later, so it's more useful to have that in a function. It's easier to test when it's in its own function. And there's another important reason, which you'll see in a moment. We're going to use a Ramda function in a moment. So let's go ahead and install Ramda from the command line by keying npm install Ramda with the save option. Now we'll go ahead and pull Ramda into our file as the constant r. Next, I'll return a value you get by calling a Ramda function named merge. Merge provides a nice way to update some data without mutating or changing any data. Here's how merge works. I'll pass in the city as the first parameter, then I'll pass in another object, which will be merged with the city object into a brand new object. Now here's an important thing to understand. If these two objects share common properties, the second object's property will override the first object's property. So for example, if the city has a temperature property, which we know it does, and the second object has a temperature property, then the second object's temperature property overrides the first object's temperature property. So to override the current temperature, I just need to set the temp property in the second object, which I'll do using the object literal shorthand syntax you see here. Okay, let's go ahead and console log the value stored in the updated city's constant. Then we'll run this code from the command line using the node command followed by the file name index.js. Cool, seemed to work. The temperatures appear to be in Celsius. Let's do this. We don't really need the temperature in a decimal value, so let's round the temperature to an integer by using the math library's round function. Okay, that looks better, cool. Some of you are probably thinking, well, what about Ramda? Isn't this a series of videos on Ramda? Well, yes, this is a series on Ramda, and Ramda has a map function that I prefer to use over the arrays map function you see here, but there's a few other things I wanna cover before we start using Ramda's map function. So hang with me for a bit, and I promise you we'll start using Ramda shortly, and I'll provide you with some very compelling reasons for preferring Ramda. Here's a question for you. Currently, we're converting each city's temperature from Kelvin to Celsius, but what if we wanted to convert the temperature to Fahrenheit? What code changes would you make to allow for this new conversion? You might be tempted to rename update temperature to update temperature to Celsius, as that's really all it does at this point. And then you could write a new function named update temperature to Fahrenheit, well, that would work, but there's a better way, which we'll look at in the next video.